I was reading this verse in 1 Timothy chapter 3, starting at verse 1. It says, This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. Now, he's saying that not everyone have to be a bishop, but it says, If a man desire the office of a bishop. Now, it doesn't mention a woman. I don't know why. I'm not saying that woman cannot be bishop, but it doesn't say. One thing I realized in the last days is that people are in the ministry. They call themselves Christians, but they don't follow the Bible. I know that they have different interpretation of the Bible, but I'm saying if you are a Christian and you don't follow the word of God who gives you instructions of how to live you just do your own thing do you still call yourself a Christian or you just use the Bible to pick and choose and cherry pick the verses that you like in the Bible so that you can run your own corporation I would say because it becomes a corporation it's not even the house of God anymore because the house of God runs the way God the uh, design it to run like for example when Moses was building the tabernacle God gave Moses the instructions the height the length and what kind of linens and what kind of stuff to use in the tabernacle so Moses did not do things his own way so a lot of people call themselves Christians and bishop and so and so but they run things their way not the way that God tells them to run things now when they come across a scripture like this 1st Timothy chapter 3 they totally ignore it or they are trying to twist what the Bible says now the Bible has a lot of good promises don't get me wrong but it also has some stuff that are hard for us to digest especially this verse here it says if a man desire the office of a bishop, he desire a good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Now let's stop right there, the husband of one wife. There are so many bishops out there who divorce their wives and marry another wife and marry another wife. They are on their third wives and they still call themselves bishops. Do you think in the eyes of God these people are still bishops of course not so if you are not a man that is blameless now before you become a bishop you must be a man of God a bishop is a title but a man of God a servant of God is somebody who serves God if you are just looking for the title but not to be a servant of God you are full of pride and you know nothing at all because the Bible calls you to be what blameless a husband of one wife to be vigilant to be sober and you have a lot of bishops out there who are drunkards they guzzle beers all day and wine they don't have good behaviors they have nasty attitude they have temper tantrums they have behavior problems but they call themselves bishop it's not about a title my friend because it's about are you a servant of God are you a servant of the living God because God is the first one who's going to judge you you might look like you are a man of God in front of the congregation and in front of people but how is your life in secret because God knows your heart and it says that to give yourself into hospitality, apt to teach. Now, how are you going to teach somebody about the word of God when you are not following the word of God yourself? Some of these bishops, yes, I'm talking to you, bishop. You need to sit down and learn and be, and, and be retrained and to be retaught. Because a lot of them are making a mess in the house of God. You're not supposed to be a bishop if you're not blameless, if you're not meeting the requirements of the word of God. I'm not saying all this stuff to be mean and to be mean-spirited, but this is the truth. The truth hurts. 
I don't mind calling you a bishop, but do you meet the requirements that God assigned for us to follow? He said to be a husband of one wife. You already got three wives. And plus you messing around with the girls in the choir. You mess around with other folks, with other flocks, other girls in the church. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is not a joke. The house of God must run with the word of God. Why do you even have the Bible if you don't follow it? In chapter 3, it says, Not given to wine, nor stricker, not greedy, or filthy lucre. Now, it's not even about only bishops. It's about pastors, ministers, uh, apostles, missionaries, whatever you call yourself. If first before you become whatever, you must be a servant. If you check out some of the books of Romans, when Paul was introducing himself, he called himself a servant of God, Paul, to be an apostle before he used the title he put servant first. Whose servant are you? Are you serving the living God? Or are you serving Lucifer? Or are you serving yourself? It's either of those three. It's either you serving yourself. It's either you serving the, the almighty God. Or are you serving Satan. Which one are you serving? Because if you're not following exactly what God calls you to do. If God calls you to be sober to be hospitality to have hospitality to have good behavior to be blameless not to be a drunkard not to be a striker not to be a greedy filthy look all these fake preachers who need who are always looking for money they're greedy for money if you don't meet those requirements why do you even get involved in the work of God you know what I've noticed people that God really called to the ministry, they are afraid to get involved in the ministry. But those people that God didn't really call are the ones trying to get in the ministry. You know why? Because their attention and their agenda are different. It is not about what God tell them to do. That's not the reason why they're coming in to follow what God is saying. But they are coming in to use the name of God to make money. Bishop, I'm talking to you. Pastors, ministers, are you a man of God? Are you a servant of God? You know what a servant of God is? Somebody who is blameless. Somebody who is a follower of Jesus Christ. Are you a follower of Jesus Christ? In verse 4, it says, One that rule well his house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. How is your household? Do you beat your wife? Do you abuse your children? Are you just a bishop and then your children is, is, is following the, the, the course of this world? Do you understand what I'm saying? Your house must be in order. See, to be a man of God is not something that is simple and easy. Because the Bible says that um, try not to be uh, with great mastery because to whom much is given, much is required. God requires a lot of you ministers more than he required from the flocks because you standing up front of you representing God. This is not a joke. So that means you must be a follower of Jesus Christ. That's why it says, be a follower of God as dear children and walk in love like Christ used to walk and gave himself for us as an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. But fornication and cleanness and covetousness, let it not even be named among you as becoming saints. Now you got all these so-called ministers who call themselves, they, I call them pimps. Because they're pimping God's church for money. They're not really after souls. Ministry is not only after your member, it's about souls, my friend. It's not about color. It's not about black and white and Chinese. It's not about your culture. It's about God. There's no culture in God. God is God. 
So that means when you're serving of God, sometimes God is going to stir you up to do things that you're not comfortable of doing, like going out in the street to preach the gospel. But you got all these ministers dressing nice, but they don't want to get dirty like Jesus used to walk down the streets to go after sinners. My friend, this is not easy, man, to serve God. I'm not saying it is. But if you don't call for this type of work, get out fast. Sit down. Bishop, I'm talking to you. If you listening to this message right now and your house is not in order, you have a second wife or only a third wife, you're a striker, you lose your temper very fast, you're not blameless, your behavior is bad, you're not vigilant, you, you always drink, you always get drunk, you smoking pot, you clubbing. When the girls walk by, you, you, can't, you can't resist it but to look. My friend, you need to sit down. Because this type of work that you are doing for God, you must be blameless, my friend. Because you represent in the almighty God. This is not a joke. This is not a corporation. This is not corporate America where you can do whatever you want to do, my friend. You need to sit down. If you're a woman, I don't think God calls women to be bishops. Yes, you're, you have your part in the ministry. I'm not against women, but it says here what? This is your true saying if a desire, if a man desire the office of a bishop. I know everybody's going to go against you, but don't go against me. Look at the Bible. What does it say? It says if a man, I'm just pointing out what the Bible says. Don't get mad at me. Don't point your fingers at me. Point your fingers in the Bible. Because if you really believe in this Bible, you must follow everything in there. It says, if a man, not a woman, at that time they had women. They had Priscilla, Aquila. They were women. There's some type of work God doesn't call women to do because God created women for a different purpose. They have their part in the ministry, but he didn't call them for that. Now, just because we live in modern days, time has changed, doesn't mean that God has changed. But anyway, let's leave that. That's another topic. But I'm talking to the bishops, my man. Those guys who call themselves bishops, but they are drinking, they think this is a joke. You need to sit down and learn. Study the Bible. Let God teach you again. And maybe in the future you understand what a bishop is. Maybe he can use you again in the ministry. But if you're just playing games, you are playing with fire because God is a consuming fire. I know you play games, but don't play around with God because God doesn't play games. He has no time to play games. He's giving you another chance. He's giving you ministers another chance. If you can't meet the requirements, you need to sit down. May God bless you. May God keep you. Again, I know the message might be hard, but the spirit will, wound, will heal your wound. God bless you.